In today's video, we're going to talk about how to install a new RJ45 connector on the end of this Cat5 Ethernet patch cable. Uh, the, the tab broke off of uh, this one here, so I've got a new connector we're going to replace it with. As with installing many different types of connectors, it's all about having the right tools. So the first thing we'll do is just uh, cut this end off since we're not going to need it anymore. So you can use anything you want there, a pair of uh, diagonal cutters, or even the the crimping tool will often come with a set of uh, cutting blades on it as well, so you could have used that. So I like cutting the cable back about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter to inch and a half uh, to uh, get at the wires to prepare them to stick in the connector. Okay, so the tool we'll use to strip the outer jacket off here is the same tool that is used to attach the connector itself. There's a number of different features on here as a flat cutter. And there's this uh, cutting feature right here with the slot. And what that allows you to do is put the wire in there and uh, close down on this. And just by rotating the wire around, it just cuts through the outer jacket. And you can easily slide that off. So with that slid off there, we now can separate these wires out. The next step in the process is to basically take the twists out of the wires. You want to kind of get them oriented in about the right way. Um, and I find that it's easy to kind of put the orange and brown on the edges because they're going to be at the edges of the connector we'll look at in a moment. And the blue and green ones are in the middle. So what we'll do is just uh, untwist those. All right, take the twists out of them and then take those pairs and just kind of run them with your fingers like this to kind of take all the bends out of them, make them nice and straight. And do that for each of the pairs. Okay, all the twists taken out of those wires and the kinks taken out, we're ready to put them in the right order. Now the wires, are again, they're twisted in pairs and they're color-coded, of course. We've got each pair has got a solid wire, or a wire that is the solid color and then a wire that has a stripe on it. Sometimes the stripes are across or sometimes they're a stripe that runs directly along with the wire. And that indicates the pairs. So to put them in the right order, I'll typically keep a little cheat sheet like this around. Uh, this is the uh, TIA T-568B wiring uh, order. And uh, this is how I do all my patch cables. There's also an A uh, suffix that's available. And the only difference is that the green pair and the orange pair are swapped. But as long as you make both ends of the wire the same, they'll both work fine. But this is how I've done all my patch cables. So uh, there's an illustration of the connector here. We can see that the uh, connector kind of is like that. So in this orientation, uh, this is the way you want the wires to be dressed. So I'll typically do that. Uh, and, and again, this is where keeping the wires long helps. I'll just uh, lay them all out next to each other in that order, keeping the little sheet down here as a guide. So the two orange pairs are first, and then I've got the green stripe that comes across, so I pull that one over here, put that one next to those. And after that we've got the solid blue and the striped blue, so we'll lay those in there next to them. And then, we're, then we go with the green solid, so that goes in here next. Let's uh, pull that in and around. And then I have the brown stripe and brown solid. So that's the order that we want all these wires to be in. So now you just got to kind of play with them a little bit to get them all to lay nice and flush against each other and and keep them all nice and straight. Okay, with them all laying nice and parallel next to each other there, now we just have to cut them to the length. And uh, there is a guide on uh, on the tool to kind of show you that. And I'll just usually eyeball it to make it about a half an inch, just a little bit longer. Uh, right about there should do it just fine. We'll use the solid cutting blade there to cut through all of these wires simultaneously to make a nice cut that's perpendicular to the wires. I'll take all those ends off and now I've got a nice flat end that we'll use to insert into the connector. Okay, we'll have our last chance here to check the order of the uh, wires and comparing compare them against our template, everything looks okay, we're ready to install the connector. With the tab facing down, we carefully insert the wires into the connector, trying to keep everything nice and flat. Each wire will kind of slide into its own slot, 
should go in with very little force. And then I'll turn the connector over and make sure that the wires have reached all the way to the end. And uh, now this is an insulation displacement connector. Each of these little metal tabs here, or contacts, you might be able to see, has uh, a set of pins that kind of pierce through the insulation when the tool is applied here. And that's how the connections are made to the wires. And there's also a little plastic tab that gets pushed down and snaps in place, and that becomes the strain relief that holds it in place. Okay, again, there's no substitute for having the right tool here. Uh, we want to insert the connector into the tool. It will bottom out in place, and uh, with that bottomed out in place, the little teeth will grab onto each of those contacts. And as we cramp down on this, it will push those contacts into place. And now this connector is made. The contacts have all been pushed down. The little plastic clip has been pushed here to hold the wire in place, and it's good to go. The last thing we need to do is test it to be sure that all the connections are good, and uh, we can put this back in service. So this is the little cable tester that I'll use. Now, you don't have to spend a lot of money on these. This one I picked up for just a few dollars at a ham fest. But this is a very inexpensive little uh, RJ45 cable tester uh, that uh, can be separated out. We can take this remote unit off to test cables that are at a long distance away. And uh, so I've got one end plugged in here already. This is the end we just finished. So we'll plug that in on this side and turn the connector on. And what it does is it cycles through every one of the pairs, or every one of the wires, and we should essentially get a light for every terminal. And uh, if the wires are crossed, then the numbers won't match, or if a wire isn't connected, the light will be blank. And this also has a slow mode, so you can watch it a little bit more carefully as it goes through each of the eight wires. So it's as simple as that. We've uh, attached the cable or re repaired this cable by attaching a new RJ45. And uh, so these tools are a nice little investment to have. Uh, the patch cables are pretty expensive when you buy them at the electronics store, but uh, you can make them yourself very inexpensively. And certainly repair them when they get broken. Thanks again for watching.